What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 video. So whenever there's a new firmware version out for the PS4, you can guarantee there's going to be people making fake videos claiming that they have some kind of exploit for the latest firmware version. So normally I just ignore these fake videos because I feel like it's not a good idea to give them any additional attention than what they're already getting. However, it's becoming more and more difficult to ignore now. I keep getting comments on my YouTube videos from people who think that there's some higher exploit because they've seen one of these fake videos. I keep getting DMs on Twitter about it. I keep getting uh, even emails with people sending me links to these videos. Now, to be fair, most people think they're fake, but they're just asking for my confirmation to be, so that they can be sure that it's definitely fake. Um, but some people believe it, and then I get them asking me why I haven't covered this yet. You know, like I've dropped the ball because I'm not covering this new exploit. So yeah, I feel like it's time that I cover it. So the idea behind this video is I'm going to show you a couple of the videos that I'm getting sent the most. And I want to show you guys the tricks that these fakers are using, some key things to look out for in the videos that you can use to tell if the video is fake. So that is the idea behind this video. Now, I know there's going to be people saying, well, if you believe these videos are real, then obviously you're an idiot or something like that. Please bear in mind that that's not the case. Just because, you know, you've maybe been in the PS4 scene for a while and you know the things to look out for, somebody who's new to the PS4 scene, who's just getting into, you know, the PS4 jailbreak, they may not have that same kind of back knowledge that you have. So therefore, it can be easier for them to get taken in by these fake exploit videos. So it's not because somebody's stupid, it's just, you know, they don't have the knowledge because um, they've not really been in the whole PS4 jailbreaking scene for long enough to tell that these videos are fake immediately. So anyway, let's get into this. So first of all, if we look at uh, this person's channel, PS4 Exploit Series, because this is every single video I get sent is from this person's channel and he pretty much just re-uploads the same videos over and over again. The two videos I get sent the most from people from this guy's channel are these two videos here. Um, how to enable debug settings on 7.50 and a PS4 exploit for 7.50 release tutorial. So let's have a look at these. So if we look at the debug settings one first. Uh, before you even run the video though, a quick way of telling if a video is most likely fake is just look at the title, look at what they're claiming. So 7.50 debug settings or uh, you know 7.50 exploit release tutorial then check some trusted sources, places like sce.party, which have the PS4 jailbreak status. So the latest full exploit in public is still 5.05, .05, and these other ones are all private. So you can just check to see there if there's a new exploit. You can also check places like PSX Hacks and Newsfeed. If there's a new exploit, it'll probably pop up in the newsfeed here. Uh, there's also other websites you can go to like darksoftware.xyz, playstationhacks.xyz, consolehacks.com, GBA Temp, um, who else? PSX Place and others. There's lots of websites you can go to that will tell you what the latest exploitable firmware is for the PS4. And then you'll be able to tell that the video is definitely fake because what they're claiming doesn't line up with what all these other websites are uh, saying. So... Anyway, but let's try and judge the video on the video on its own right here. So if we play the video here, I'm running it at 1.5 times speed just to get through it quicker. So first of all, all he's doing here is he's putting a .bin payload on the root of his USB drive. Fairly standard stuff. So let's go into uh, when he gets onto the PS4. So then he shows his firmware version is 7.50 to prove that he is on the latest firmware version. Now this is the first trick that you have to look out for because this number is easily spoofable on an older firmware version. So if you're running like 5.05, a 5.05 .05 exploit, you can spoof your firmware version to say that you're on 7.50 so that this number shows up as 7.50. So it's very easy to spoof that firmware version in your settings, in your system information. So do not believe any videos just because they show you their system information and it says the latest firmware version number in there. Uh, that literally doesn't mean anything. So yeah, anyway, switching back here to this video, if we continue on, so he then goes back to the PS4 home screen, says there's a download in the description. Okay, so here's the next big obvious thing if I pause it here. Here's how you can tell he's definitely not on 7.50. So first of all, he's not connected to the internet. Secondly, his profile's an offline profile. There's no little 
blue circle next to his name or red circle to show that he's appearing offline or anything. So he's on an offline profile. Uh, there's no PS Plus logo to the right of his name. So he doesn't have PS Plus. He's got no friends added. Definitely an offline profile. But even more obvious than that is that every single game he has installed on his PS4 are games that can run on 5.05 .05 or lower. So Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, you've got Advanced Warfare, World War II, Ghosts, The Last of Us Remastered, and I believe Uncharted 4 was there on the end as well. All those games are runnable on 5.05 .05 firmware or less. There's not a single game installed on his PS4 that requires a higher firmware to run. So, you know, not even something like Red Dead Redemption 2 or Days Gone, Spider-Man, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Resident Evil 3 Remake, any of those kind of games, none of those installed. So... Clearly he's on 5.05 .05 or one of the other older exploits for the PS4. So yeah, anyway, so even if he does load the debug settings now, I mean, he's on 5.05 .05 most likely. So obviously uh, you can load the debug settings on 5.05. .05. Yeah, anyway, he goes to this website, he goes to 7.50 debug settings, loads the debug settings from here. Is he going to load this at any point? Here we go. So he launches it, it says debug settings enabled and it says that it's all loaded and everything's good and then he shows that he has the debug settings enabled but again obviously you can enable the debug settings on 5.05 .05 with just hen or with a debug setting payload and yeah we know he's on 5.05. .05. Okay so to recap this video so basically what he's doing is he's using a firmware version spoofer on 5.05 .05 to look like he's on 7.50 then he cuts from not having the debug settings enabled to this full screen download and description. So he probably ran uh, the 5.05 .05 homebrew enabler, which enables the debug settings. And then he hid the cut with this download and description. And so when it cuts back here, he's already got the debug settings enabled. Everything he does on this website does nothing. And then he just shows that he has the debug settings enabled. Uh, at the end here. You can tell again that the video's fake without even watching it by just looking at the at how the comments and the the views stack up. It doesn't make any sense. There's about eight comments here and most of them are like, you know, you're the best bro. Thanks bro. First, thanks work. Thanks, this works. Clearly bots. Um, and then also 56,000 views and only eight comments. I mean, when does that ever happen? Uh, you know, if I put up a video that has, say, 10,000 views, it has at least 100 comments, somewhere between 100 and 200. So clearly view botted, botted comments as well. Also, you can see that his username is the same as the username on the form. So clearly this is the same person. Uh, the person's YouTube channel is the same person who set up this form website with the fake exploits. So there is that as well. Moving on to the other video that people kept sending me which was this one here, the 7.50 release tutorial. So this video is a bit different. As you can see, he is on the latest firmware version. He's got the Easter sale thing showing up here. He's got the um, you know little blue circle next to his name. So he's on an online account. He's got six friends online. He's got the PS Plus logo next to his name. He's definitely online. He's definitely on the latest firmware version here. So yeah, he shows his system information again, but you know, it doesn't matter. We know that he is indeed on the latest firmware version this time. So let's see what happens. So he goes to the internet browser. He goes back to that same website again. Okay, so here we go. He loads this and it says loaded. And then it says successfully webkit exploit because of English. This is another trick you have to look out for. These message boxes that pop up on screen. Now, on a real exploit, on a real exploit like the 5.05 .05 exploit with uh, the homebrew enabler or any other payload, when you load the payload, this is not the kind of message that pops up. The message that you get is the little notify message that pops up on the top left hand corner of the screen to say that the exploit has been loaded. In order to get those messages to pop up on the screen in the top left hand corner, you need a kernel at exploit in order to do that. Uh, those those messages are being loaded by the actual payload itself, not by, you know, the website. So obviously the website injects the payload. The code for the message is contained within the actual payload itself. And that then it gets loaded once the payload is loaded. Whereas these message boxes that you see right here, these are just JavaScript alert boxes. 
So anyone can do that in a website. You just put a JavaScript alert box and make it say whatever you want it to say. And then when you click a button, um, it displays that message. So no proof of an exploit whatsoever with those messages. So that's another thing to look out for. If you get the proper message in the top left hand corner, then that proves that you do actually have an exploit. But those JavaScript alert boxes proves nothing. And that that's another way of telling that um, it probably is not a real exploit when you see those messages uh, instead of the proper ones in the top left. And then he just shows he has a bunch of games installed, like a crap ton of games installed. And then the video just ends after that. So, so yeah, that's all he shows. So there was no proof of an exploit anywhere there. I mean, he already had all those games installed right at the start of the video. You can see the games folder right here. So he already had all those games installed. He didn't show him not being able to run any of those games before he ran the exploit, which would also help to prove that he does have an exploit, but he never showed that he couldn't run those games beforehand. He didn't even show him running the games after he ran the exploit. So yeah, there's no proof of any kind of exploit there whatsoever. And just to show, if we go to that same website that he was on, and we go to that same place, PS4 exploit, PS4 exploit 7.50, click the same button to load the exploit. So it's got some code that checks to make sure you're actually uh, using the PS4 web browser to access it. So if I do control U and look at the source code and then search for the word loaded, then you can see my point right here. So it's just a couple of JavaScript alert boxes that say loaded and then WebKit exploit, and then it adds a a div class that says congratulations it injected on 7.50. That's all just static, that's all hard coded in there. And there's no actual exploit being loaded in between any of these messages. So all that happens when you click the button is you get this message, then this message, then this message, but no actual exploit is being loaded anywhere in here. So there you go, completely proved that that exploit is fake. So I'm pretty sure the other one is gonna be the same. So if we go to uh, PS4 exploits, the, the one from the debug settings one, which was this one down here, debug settings load, the little USB icon, control U, search for debug settings enabled. And again, it's the same thing. So debug settings enabled, and then a bunch of fake logs, uh, which are just div classes and it's hard coded and dress. <laughs> he really needs to work in his English. Um, but th this supposed address or address is hard coded as well. So it's completely fake. So this is just a bunch of fake logs and no actual exploit being loaded anywhere in here. So yeah, so that's that. So many people will ask, well, why bother making these fake videos? Well, it brings in a lot more views uh, because people want there to be a 7.50 exploit. So any videos on a 7.50 exploit are going to attract a lot more viewers and they run ads on the videos so they get more money from the ad revenue. On top of that, they also then direct people to that forum website. You can see that they've got ads running on the forum, so they then go from the ads from the YouTube video to the ads on the forum, so they get money from the ads from all the people who visit this forum website. Um, so yeah, it's just a, a way of wasting your time so that they can get more ad revenue. But there could be something more sinister going on because how do they have all of, all of those games installed on their uh, PS4? So this is interesting. They could just be buying them from all the money they're getting from the ad revenue from these fake videos. But there could be something more sinister going on. And I have to say allegedly here because I haven't actually checked. But there's this other thing that they have. This is another one of his videos, this API tool. And this is a program that is supposedly meant to pre-order games for you for free. So I think the idea is that you connect to the console via its IP address, and then you select the game you want to pre-order, you click request, and then it's supposed to pre-order that game. They show the pre-orders here. So he clicks Last of Us 2, and then Last of Us 2 appears there, and it's now pre-ordered. Now, the thing that's interesting about this is that why go to the trouble of making the, a fake tool? Now you can tell it's fake because again, they do the same trick they did with the other one where he doesn't actually show that he doesn't already have the game pre-ordered. Obviously, if you wanted to prove that this was real, you would show that you don't have any games pre-ordered in, in the PSN store. Then you would use the tool and then go back into the PSN store and show, hey, look, now the game is pre-ordered. But 
he doesn't do that. So obviously he already had the game pre-ordered before he ran the tool and then he just clicked some fake button in a tool which does nothing and then shows that he has the game pre-ordered even though he already had the game pre-ordered in the first place. Yeah, so again, it's a fake tool, but why bother going to the trouble of making this fake tool? It could just be that he's, you know, it's another way of getting more people to go to the website and go to the video and get more money from the ad revenue. Or there could be something more sinister going on like an actual scam because it also requires you to enter an email address and password in here. And that concerns me because it could be that they're requiring you to enter your PSN email and password. Now I could be wrong, it could just be the email address and password of your account on this form website here, which is possible. And if that's the case, then okay, fine. But it could also be the PSN account ID and password that they're requiring you to enter in here. If that is the case, then you're just giving them their, your PSN account ID because it's uploading that to a database that they have access to. And then they could just be um, license transferring your games from your PSN account to their own PS4s or hijacking your account to buy more games uh, off your off your account. So uh, that could be why they have so many games installed on their PS4. Who knows? I could be wrong about that. I have to say allegedly because um, it's just a guess at this point. I haven't actually downloaded this tool to check because there is no download for this tool on their website. They they have a supposed download for it, but it's just a, a button that's disabled. And then they're trying to get you to subscribe to all their social media in order to enable the button, even though obviously the button won't enable after you subscribe to all their social media because how are they going to keep track of that anyway? I could have maybe got this tool by joining their Discord server as a fake user and trying to trying to get them to send me a download for it so I could check. But yeah, I, I haven't bothered really doing that. So I could be wrong about it. Maybe it's just, you know, a fake tool that's just designed to get more people to go to the website and get more ad revenue. Or it could be something more sim sinister where they're stealing PSN account IDs and then they go from just being fakers to being outright scammers. So anyway, who knows? Now I know that some of you guys will be wanting to go to his channel and leaving a comment warning people that it's fake or disliking his videos, but I'd highly recommend not doing that because he'll just delete your comment anyway, and then you're just giving him an extra view, and the more views, legitimate views he has, the more high up his video will be in the search algorithms, and then more people will fall for this fake. So I highly recommend just not going to his channel. Um, if you can help it. But hopefully you guys found that video interesting. That's how you um, can identify fake videos. First of all, always check what the title of the video says and then compare it with some trusted sources, places like PSX Hacks and SCE.Party, PlayStation Hacks, .xyz, all the other websites you can go to to check. And then when you look at the actual video, don't believe the fact that they're showing you their system software version because they could easily just be spoofing that. And then also check when they load an exploit if they actually have the proper message box that pops up in the top left hand corridor instead of just a JavaScript alert box. And then you can actually go to the website and look at the source code and see if they're actually loading an exploit or not. So yeah, so there's a few different ways there that you can tell if a video is fake. So hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.